Hi, my name is Carmen Ward. I'm here today in support of House Bill 581. I was born and raised in St. Louis City. I have one son, his name is Paul Covington. He has autism and intellectual disability. He's currently a sophomore at Kip High School and has been at the Kip High School or been with the Kip family since the fifth grade. Kip continues, in my opinion, to be one of the top schools in the city of St. Louis. I'm here today to briefly talk to you about his progress that he's made since joining KIPP and how we partner with other entities to support the outcome of the children that they serve. Paul was diagnosed when he was five. He left private school, he entered St. Louis Public School. He went to several elementary schools, all of them closed within a year. And that was in the city and the county. Then I became aware of charter schools. Paul ended up at KIPP in 2013, 2014. He was performing below his age level. He did not have a suitable IEP. His educational, social, and emotional goals were lacking. At the first meeting of school leader, Mr. Esposito, he explained why he chose charter schools and why he chose the inner city. I don't remember all of his words. I remember his passion. He spoke with his responsibility, the scholar's responsibility, and most importantly, the parent's responsibility. He further stated that we wouldn't always get along. We wouldn't always agree, but his focus was the scholar. Kip advocated for Paul. They pushed Paul. They nurtured all of his gifts. They found things in my son that I didn't know was there, that he didn't even know was there. Today, Paul is a founding sophomore at Kip High School. He has one friend, and it's his special friend, but he has the strong family support of KIPP. His reading has pre improved beyond my expectations, and I am seeing a drastic improvement in his basic mathematics retention. As we partner to look towards Paul's future, we're determining what is the best support for my son. As we determine him to, what, he's gonna, what will he contribute to society? What will he contribute to his community? KIPP is right now, they're retesting Paul in all areas to determine what additional support he may require, if they can give him that support, or if they need to look for another alternative for Paul so that he can become a productive member of his community. Right now, Paul has been accepted into one of the top magnet public schools in the city of St. Louis. I want him to be able to stay at KIPP. That is why they're pushing to find all of the resources and put them in place so they do not have to leave Paul. So Paul does not have to leave them. I'm a college graduate with a double bachelor. I live in the 21st Ward. It's my responsibility to advocate for every child in my community. I'm 1.5 miles away from the lowest performing district. Those children don't even have an opportunity or a choice of where they can go to school. If I choose to, I can keep them in St. Louis Public. I can put them in Magnet. I can keep them in a charter, or I can pay for private. The other kids, their parents, they have no choices. They are at the will of you and the people who make the laws. As government officials, you can choose to correct this by passing the necessary legislation to educate all of our children. It's up to you to give them a choice. It's up to you to determine whether they're going to be able to contribute to the community they live in. You have all that power. The alternative, which we already know, is to prepare them for the criminal justice system, which is already set up for them also, and it's waiting for them. Our children deserve the same opportunity as Rockwood, Fox, and every other community that has these strong school systems and that your children go to. I thank you for listening to me and hearing me, and I thank you for meeting my son. He prepared all of you guys a little gift. These little men helped to teach Paul. This is something they taught him at KIPP, and this is the best way for him to learn. I didn't know that, but they figured out the best way to teach him so he can retain. Please give my child the same access that you're giving your children. Thank you. Thank you so very much, ma'am. Um, Representative Baker. To inquire. Go ahead, sir. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for bringing Paul. Um, 
I personally believe that charters can, can provide a variety of uh, resources and, and value even beyond education. Um, and, and from my study, I think many charters kind of provide a, a hub uh, of, of a connection that, for those students to those resources and kind of offer, uh, you, know, you know, contribute holistically to the, the well-being of the student. Can you speak to that in your situation? Well, Paul has a wealth of resources. Until I really got to the Kip family, I did not understand everything that encompassed autism and the services he needs. So we partner, he has paraeducational support, he has um, extended education after school. Um, I have direct contact with the principal and the teacher and we communicate via text throughout the day of everything that's going on with Paul. Paul has case managers through the St. Louis Regional Center, um, advocates through the St. Louis Arts, uh, a representative through Impact. All of these entities come together and they advocate for Paul. I'm mom, I'm always gonna advocate, but I might not always make the right decision. You know, Kip, they really want to keep Paul, but they have also, and this is from the head of the school, know that there's a strong possibility because it's a founding school and it's a baby. They may not have all the support that they need to support a kiddo like mine. So they have partnered with St. Louis Public Schools and said, hey, what are you doing? What resources do you have that we don't have? that we can put into this school and maybe try to keep Paul. And if we can't, what is the ability for him to come to St. Louis Public School? Um, what I see at Kip is, it's a wraparound approach. The young man that's um, on a picture with my son, he's special needs. I believe it, I know it because I know the signs. Right now we're working with mom and dad for them to understand what are the signs? What are you looking for? So. When I say it's intimate and it's, we are a support group, we, we hold each other up. We do the work internally to lift all of our children up. Kip is predominantly white teachers, but they love him. The difference is, as an African-American woman, what I found is that my people that look like me are the ones that don't know my son. They don't understand my son. They don't know how to support my son. Um, ignorance can be bliss. You know, when you don't know, you don't know. And a lot of our people, they don't know, so they can't do any better. But Kip raises the children to the mark of understanding he's not retarded, he's not weird, he's not different, he's Paul. And in unique in all of him, He's beautiful. There are things that he can teach those kids that they would never learn from their mother and their father. Um, so I don't see a color issue. Um, and I'm probably going off on a tangent, but I wanted to make sure I hit this. In order for our people to be in these schools, they have to have a desire to want to be there. You know, um, sometimes educating the kids is more important than the bottom line of the dollar. You know, um, the teachers that are at Kip, the money is not the issue. The kid is the issue. So I don't care what color you are, if you put my son first, you got Beaumont, you got Sumner, you got Ashland, all within my neighborhood. And all of them are horrible. Every last one of them. Everybody get their degrees, they leave the neighborhood. They leave. They have no desire to be there. I'm saying, I support it. I'm going to back it because that's all I've got. And i got to teach my people that. And that's why I support charter schools. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Representative Dogan. So, Black. Thank you uh, for your testimony um, and thank you for bringing Paul before us. Um, I have two kids who um, have autism, and I'm fortunate because I live in Rockwood and SSD is awesome. Sure is. You know, my kids need great services and everything. Uh, but one of the things that I keep hearing as a knock on charter schools is people want us, or people have this perception that charter schools don't educate kids with special needs. Come on. So I think it's really important to have you here giving this testimony um, to that. Um, Paul's not the only person with special needs in his school, is he? He is not the only kid with special needs in his school. Yeah, 
so um, that you think that's a you know that's a misperception mm -hmm. that charters somehow discriminate and don't take in kids with special needs and don't do a good job of educating them as well as everybody else, right? Correct. That's a misconception. Paul gets the best support that can be provided to him under the special school district guidelines, and Kip goes above and beyond for Paul. Um, right now, because it's only the sophomore year. Kip is looking at the, the fact of, do we have what he needs? And that's why he's been accepted into a magnet St. Louis public school. But in the gap, they're trying to get it in place because they also know that if he leaves this school, since he's been there since fifth grade, he may regress socially and emotionally. I can look back here and um, she left, but my sister that's trying to open a new charter school, that was his first principal when he went into charter school. She educated Paul. She's the reason why the IEP got put into place the way it needs to be. Kimberly Townsend. She's the reason. She did that. So charter schools do work. And let's not forget this. This eroding of St. Louis public schools, this just didn't happen when charter schools popped up. This is not new, people. It's just now an issue because it, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, these white folks are coming in trying to put schools in the cities. It was not an issue. It was not. We need this. And anybody that's against it, I don't understand where your moral compass is to not want every child educated. It makes no sense. Anybody else? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Rick Quick question. Uh, to inquire, sorry. Proceed. Quick question. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Nice to meet you too, beloved. Thank you for bringing Paul. Um, you you hit on a point I made earlier a little bit about school closing um, and vacant buildings. And you're right. That's not uh, a. It's not just a problem in St. Louis City. It's certainly a community problem where there are <laughs> buildings that are just left empty and it tends to drop our property value. I, my quick question for you is, how far is Kip from where you live? Um, it takes me maybe seven minutes so to it, get there. So it's in, it's in your community. Yeah. So it was a building that, that was repurposed so where Paul can go to school in the community in which he lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I, I'm familiar with your ward. My, your actual alderman is, is a friend of mine, John. And we, we've had this conversation as well about making sure that our kids are able to go to school in the communities in which they live. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate that uh, because I'm also raising a child with special needs who's emotionally, behaviorally disturbed, and they're going to close the high school where he lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm faced with either going to send him to private school or moving to Pattonville School mm -hmm. District. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes,